We are at Rimwood Farms along the banks of the James River. Getting ready to weigh a load of corn. Dump it, dry it, store it. So here we are picking right there near President John Tyler's place, Sherwood Forest. A little bit of history. Been a little tough year. Some dry weather, hot weather. Corn going in the 80s to 200s. Depends on what spot of the field. So we're just trying to find the right variety of hybrid. Here we go. Yeah, this could be painful. So there's Irma and then there's Jose right behind it, like bam, bam. But Jose is gonna kind of stay out in the Atlantic. That's what they're forecasting. And Irma is gonna kind of follow the Florida and then maybe go through South Carolina and with Georgia and South Carolina, and then towards the eastern part of Tennessee. We'll get some rain and a little bit of wind. So how much does it affect us? Not a clue, but we'll find out. We've had it, you know, we've had storms come through and it wasn't good for our irrigated corn because it fell over. You know, the corn's doing a lot better than what we deserve. We did go through a, a pretty good dry period. Some of our bigger challenges have been the temperatures on our earlier planted corn. We just got so hot and it stayed hot, even night times. And if you're in corn production, you know corn needs to slow down growing. It likes cooler nights. The corn just keeps growing. And I think what it impacted the most, we, we got a good kernel set, but we don't have the test weight that we're used to. The kernels aren't as deep as they normally are. I think the companies have done a good job in their hybrid development to handle the heat and the stress. Yeah, this corn here is 108 day corn and it's running 16, 16 and a half percent moisture. So kind of dry. Right now we're in some 150 bushel stuff, but we just left some 80 bushel corn. Soil types really showing this year. The, um, we don't have good natural warden holding capacity, but when you get into the areas that are even sandier than the rest of the field, they suffered in the drought. And then this particular farm can be wet in parts of the same field where it can be dry, because just the way the soil lays and it seems like where our lower yields are is where we were wet in the springtime. And we just don't have this, we don't have the stand that we like seeing. It was just too wet, got a bunch of rain. Rain makes grain, but rain is costly sometimes. <laughs> Sorry, um, Yeah, you can't be coughing when I'm on film, man. Come on, Seth. Take, take two. I already uh, cut. That's right. Down. Yeah, dang on. Some water. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It needs a touch of his makeup. Sorry to ruin your no. big moment. There. Yeah, things Sorry. were going so good, man. I was on a train of thought that was, I don't know, man. It was, it would have been it, you know. It, it was a cut take you were looking for all these years. Okay. I will be the first Corn War guy that we'll be able to celebrate being a grandfather. My um, daughter's expecting in March. I guess if you just pull that truck down here, I'll fill it up down here where the other trucks are. And then I think Barley went to get us some lunch. I need some food because I got a big form. What would you get us to eat? Fisherman's platter, there's like eight pieces.
One o'clock is when the judges are supposed to be here. So we'll go down, I shell a couple loads here. And we got this great big corn crop. I mean like 60, 70 bushel better than we've ever had. We put up a, a new personal best. I think that should win the national again, the number we put up, that's pretty big. Unbelievable. This is what happens when you hit a ditch and kind of bend your ladder. Deep ditches. You gotta love Southern Indiana. That's what you call starting off on a on a of a note. I clean windows. Last year was our first bad experience with that southern rust. It kind of whipped our last year everybody in the area more fungicides but what do you do and it just smears up everything gets where you can't see out of the cab out of the windows yeah that stuff's itchy magic balls that is one problem we have here now this corn has shrunk probably a foot and a half shorter but the corn is just too tall or in our area and i don't know if that's just because of our fertility of the soil if it's the climate our agronomist can't answer that either i mean um you know it's, it's just too tall there's just so much plant mass there you can go see how dry it is out there still a little tough i tell you what you tell me this year that you know you go through that 10, 12 inch rain, whatever it was there in April, and and tell me we have this kind of corn crop uh, planted May 15th. I just said there's no way, but it's just phenomenal corn everywhere. That just normally don't happen around here. See that 400 bushel corn coming? That's pretty good corn over there, Ken, I'm telling you. So we'll go down and then skip 24 and come up for the first check. Let's roll, buddy. That first pass down was better than this pass up. So I'm thinking, we move over, I don't know if that will get any better, but this one here should get a little better. It's pretty good corn. How dry was it? Six, five, uh, two. 24. 351. 351, that's a recall. Yep. 351 on the first check. Starting to get a little itchy. Knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. <laughs> so I guess he's ready to roll down there. So was you guys up at David's already? From what he was telling me, he thought it was going to be pretty, pretty good. I mean, all in all, I call today a very good success. I mean, two pretty nice pulls we had today. I don't care who you are, that's really good corn. And I knew, I mean, I thought, man, this, going off the, the monitor, what it was kicking out, you know, I figured that first test would be around that 390. And then I got out and they said 359. I was like, what? There's no way. Uh, but it was right. Second cut went 366, I believe. Everybody wants to hit that 400 mark, but you know, there's just a handful of guys that's ever done that. It just tells you how hard it is. You know, you, you take this and you learn, and hopefully next year you get better. 
already sitting there thinking what I could be doing for next year. Uh, learned a lot on the fungicides. This rust deal is for real. I think it's just something that we're gonna have to learn to deal with every year. I mean, it's just the way it is. The things that I take away from this year, two by two uh, works, uh, in furrow works, fertility, you gotta get that plant jump started early. You know, we treat, like I said, our contest corn a lot like our uh, our conventional corn, I should say. We just believe it's that big of a deal getting a start. Uh, very important. I mean, plant that seed in the ground, you know, when it hits the ground, you're losing bushels. It's, it's how, how well you can manage the losses, try to make the losses after you put it in the ground to a minimum. Uh, you know, it's not about just going out plant corn and fill the planter up with seed and go dump it. As you can see on a lot of other other guys that's in this, well, it's not the physical work anymore of being a farmer. It's it's getting to be more the the mental work. Bottom lines are tight right now, and you know it's it's all about being efficient on the whole farm. We're real, realizing the value of soil samples are huge. Tissue samples, huge. You know, you got spots on your farm that don't need fertilizer or potash or whatever, and you know, so it backs it off. It don't put it on there, it'll put it on the next spot. So, you know, it's just changed so much already in, in the, you know, 20 some years I've been, 20 years I've been farming on my own. Uh, it's quite amazing how much farming's changed. You know, it's just all about trying to tie everything together and be the most profitable that you can be at it and do a good job and be a good steward of the land you know that's that's why I'm doing it for my next generation of kids and you know if they want to farm you know I hope to leave the ground better than what it was when I got it well we harvested the first of August we picked a little bit because we have the 360 grain savers an attachment on the corn head with brushes that go around the gathering chain so it keeps the kernels from falling through the rollers. So we put those on and then we put the 360 chain rolls to help break down the corn stalks. And boy, it made a big difference. So we did start picking earlier. The April planted corn matured earlier this year because of the heat. The later stuff, we're still got a little bit of time on that. Usually we pick some in August, but not the first of August. My goal is to finish up before October 1st. That's my goal. This combine controls that tractor. When he gets beside me, there's a little box that is in the screen. And when he gets inside that box and he hits the auto steer, I can control the tractor from here. So if I speed up, the tractor speeds up. If I slow down, it slows down. If I turn, it turns. It's called machine sync. And we just put that on. We're trying to get used to it while we're picking corn. So when we start cutting soybeans and the, the header's a lot wider, there's not as much room for error. Kind of excited about that. And it works very well. Technology is great. One day I want to be great. I like to wait till I'm done in the evening and then I'll look at the yield data at the computer and see what, see how things done. You know, I make mental notes. I got a little pad in here. Like eventually you'll start seeing me write notes down so I get ideas for next year. You know, I've already picked some of this hybrid, these two hybrids at another farm. We've got some good notes there. Things we look for, what do the leaves look like after it's matured? You, know, you notice this particular hybrid, the leaves are still good and wide. It tells me it's got good plant health. See, some of the tops broke out, but not really bad. We spent a lot of time making sure I position the right hybrid in the right field and the right farm. But then you always second guess yourself, so then we split our planter just to confirm it and spread some risk out. 
take 22. Well, at home, you know, we were picking good corn. It just wasn't the corn that we were hoping to see. Uh, the early April planted corn can't, got a great start. Things were looking good. We rarely get hail on our farm. Well, 2017, every irrigated field of corn I had had some degree of hail, which is like, wow. And then at home we had a, a strong wind event, so we had some lodging, some green snap and some brittle snap and some corn. And the corn that survived that, you know, we were picking decent corn. I mean, I'm saying upper 200s to mid 300s. So year in and year out, that would be good. But knowing the effort and the work that we were putting into it and the potential that land has had in the past, it wasn't the yields that we were hoping for. Another reason why you want to spread your risk out, we had some other irrigated corn planted later in May. It missed all that heat we're anticipating or hoping that corn is going to do better so we will see yeah i'm blessed i got my granddad taught me a lot and then my dad good golly he just shared his knowledge with me so that's kind of neat i had two generations above me i got to work with and my late uncle and the funny thing is, a lot of things here I'm thinking we're trying new, they've already experimented at some point in time. It may not be the same, but it's, it could be similar. You know, this land's been farmed since 1609, and here we are, what, 2017. So over 400 years, and it's still some of the most productive ground around. My dad was like everybody else's dad that farm, you know, work, 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 and, um, you know, the only time we had seen him was in the morning uh, before school when we'd go up and we had chicken house, and me and my mom and um, two sisters and brother, you know, from kindergarten on up till my dad got sick, which is in eighth grade, uh, you know, every morning at, 4, 4.30, we'd get up and gather eggs every morning. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, it didn't matter. And you couldn't be sick, because even if you was sick, your butt was going up there to gather eggs. Uh, he was like most other fathers, you know, a hero to the, to the kid. You wanted to grow up and be like him, and he was always good at everything he did. I think he'd be pretty proud of, of what we've become, you know. He's been dead. Uh, shoot 27 years already and that probably ain't a day goes by I still don't think about him. The toughest thing in my life was uh, and actually the best probably moment in my life when I was a freshman playing basketball and I kind of th thought he knew that his time was coming to the end. He was at Louisville Hospital uh, Humana dad's main doctor there he goes uh gene what do you want to do that was my dad's name gene he goes what do you want to do he said well doc my son's playing ball basketball down at north harrison high school uh, i never got to see him play He said, I'd like to go down and what? He said, I'd like to go down and watch him play once. So I, I didn't know he was coming. They wheeled him in a wheelchair there. And, and I tell you what, I don't know if God was had a hand in it or what but 
Uh, I scored 32 points that game, and I missed one shot. And to see him smile, you know. And it still sucks that he's gone. Because, uh, you know, I think he would be kind of proud of, of what his son accomplished. But, no. Well, the way the ball, ball bounces, man. You win some, you lose some. today I will say that hands down and now they'll all be over 350 today I'm pretty sure put it this way my high before was 374 and we beat it so it's above 374 but not 400.